Welcome to the constant. In today's video, we'll be exploring the biomes, creatures, and the loot of the ruins. If you wish to only go to a specific part of the video, click on the timeframes in the description. That being said, let's begin. First, let's start off with the biomes. The wild is the main entrance towards the ruins, and within it, you can find cave lichen, lesser glow berries, and ponds. When fishing in ponds, it will give eels which can be used to make three crockpot fishing. Slurpers and mole worms can be found, and although very rarely, monkey pods too can spawn. You can also find cave banana trees, which can be harvested for cave banana for crockpot fishes that can give decent sanity. In the village biome, you can find small monkeys and tons of small monkey pods. Glucoside walls are also abundant here for free glucoside fragments, but due to small monkeys, you might want to be careful. Oh, and death spiders can also spawn. Just make sure not to stay here during the Niper phase. Military and sacred biome are very similar, but the main difference between them is the color of their turrets and what you can find within them. In both biomes, you can find an ancient pseudoscience station, damaged clockworks, and ancient statues for gems. However, exclusive to the sacred biome is the ancient chest which is used to get blueprints for replica relics, if you give the right combination, that is. Just like the name suggests, the labyrinth is a maze-like area within the ruins. The labyrinth holds ornate chests which can have items from spears to rare gems. Be careful, however, since the chest can be cursed and cause different things to happen. Death spiders are abundant here, so if you wish to traverse the area, you could hug the wall when passing through their turf, causing them not to spawn. The labyrinth is also the only place to find the ancient guardian, which is at the end of the maze. Now let's move on to the inhabitants of the ruins. Number 1, Swim Monkeys. Swim monkeys are neutral mobs that will attempt to steal any items off from the ground, and in containers like Hutch. They will also harvest cave banana trees, berry bushes, and any mushrooms. If they pick up a hat, they will wear it and get the same benefits as a player would. Killing one will give a morsel, a banana, nightmare fuel, and whatever they have stolen. If you attack them, all the other spawn monkeys will be hostile and start throwing poo at the player from afar. If the enemy is in melee range, they will bite. During the sniper phase, they become hostile and when killed, they will drop the same loot along with beard hair. Number 2, Slurpers. Slurpers are hostile creatures which will attempt to latch on any player's head and knock off any headwear on the player. They provide some light after replacing your head slot, but will cause a hunger drain of 1.7 per second. They can drop 2 light bulbs when killed and have a 50% chance to drop their pelt, which can be crafted for a belt of hunger and a super gas region circuit for WX. Number 3, Damage Clockworks. Damage Clockworks to just ring their clockworks who got the triumphant skin when they were in the AFK school. Why do those exist? Uh, uh, anyways, they act the same way as their fixed counterparts, you can drop gears along with frazzle wires and nightmare fuel. They can also become followers by repairing the broken clockworks with three gears to fight for you unless they were struck by lightning. Number 4, Dangling Death Dwellers. They're just three skinned warriors. That's it. Number 5, Crawling Nightmares and Nightmare Beasts are reskin of the regular shadow creatures, but they can attack regardless of sanity level and disappear right after the Nightmare Beast. Number 6, The Ancient Guardian Found within the labyrinth, the Ancient Guardian is a bigger rook, but has a bite attack and during his second phase, he can spawn shadow tentacles. You can also kite them, but you can also let them charge into one of his pillars found in his arena, causing him to be stunned. Upon his death, you will spawn a giant ornate chest which can include tons of random loot from the pseudo science station. You will also drop some meat and a guardian horn in order to make a houndy shooting, which is just a stationary priest. That's friendly. Now for the loot. I'll only be talking about the loot made from the pseudo science station, and they'll be separated into categories based on what slot they fill up. So, like, you know, the construction avenue with the body slot, you know, the suicide crown with the head slot, and everything like that. They just begin for whatever, I don't care. Let's first start off with the body slot. First, the construction avenue. The construction avenue is an avenue which has all the crafting requirements for an item. The magiluminescence, which makes you run faster and can provide light. 
the Lazy Forger, which picks up any item on the ground for you, and finally, the Suicide Suit, which absorbs 90% of incoming damage without any downsides. Next, we have the items that take up the hand slot. Some of these can include the Lazy Explorer, which makes you run fast as a walking cane and allows you to teleport, the Star Caller Staff, which calls stars from the heavens that can provide light and heat, the Construction Staff, which is a hammer that gives you 100% of the items required to craft the structure that you used it on and can work on items as well. The Pick Slash Axe, a tool that works both as a pickaxe and an axe, and the Thulocyte Club, which is like a fresh handbag and can spawn shadow tentacles, which aids you in battle. We also have the Headstock, which only has the Thulocyte Crown. The Thulocyte Crown can give a temporary shield to block 100% damage from enemies. And that's really all that's special about it. There are also miscellaneous items like the Thulocyte Medallion, which can keep track of the Nightmare Cycle, Aunty Ashutius, which is a stationary sentry, and the Thulocyte Walls, which are just better walls. The last one is pretty useful. 